Hi all, good morning. I have joined this session to give you some idea about basic concepts of physics. Here I will cover the first unit of uh, standard 6 Samachi syllabus. Before going into the topic, let us see the basic what is science. You know what is science? Science in simple terms can be defined as the knowledge and understanding of this natural world based on facts learned through experiments and observation. In my words, I can say it as knowing and understanding the nature and behavior of the nature. Get my point? Every point that we see can be explained through science. The surroundings which we live and uh, it covers the whole universe. Everything can be explained through science. That is the knowledge and understanding the facts about this natural world that are learned through experiments and observations by so many people. Okay. Next topic is science types you know there are uh, like uh, life science physical science and so on now we are going to see about physics okay physics what is physics simply it answers the question how it covers object ranging from very small to the universe see i'll tell you everywhere we could see physics it's not just a simple word i can explain it see every morning we get up through alarm what does alarm give a sound where does the sound come from how does it propagate everything can be explained through physics another example i'll give you we are walking on a road why why are we falling down because it is due to friction between the surface of our feet and the surface of the road it is explained through physics Likewise, every concept starting from microorganism, I mean uh, starting from very small thing, thing to the whole universe, it can be explained through the concepts of physics. Some of the basic physics concepts are matter, motion, energy, force, electricity, magnetism, measurement and so on. Okay, now I am going to cover the first unit of 6th standard physics which is measurement. What is measurement? Before getting into the definition, I will give you an example. You want to buy 1 kg of potato. You are going to a uh, shop and asking the shopkeeper for 1 kg of potato. What does he do? He takes a beam balance, keep a 1 kg weight on one side and your potatoes on another side when both matches he will give you 1 kg of potato that means i'll tell you it is the comparison of unknown quantity with known quantity here the unknown quantity is your potato and known quantity is nothing but the weight 1 kg weight so simply measurement can be said as the comparison of unknown quantities with known quantities okay likewise uh, we will uh, measure temperature through thermometer this is all measurement comparison of known quantity i mean comparison of unknown quantity with the known quantity okay some of the example for measuring instruments are weigh balance clock measuring jar ruler tape etc in every day of our life we use measurement just think for some other examples you'll get to know that measurement is used everywhere in our daily life okay okay the basic metric table you know i think we'll see that what is a metric table like meter gram liter so we have millimeter centimeter decimeter meter decameter hectometer kilometer likewise in gram and liters we'll express okay i will uh, explain you the conversion table that is converting from meter to millimeter and millimeter to centimeter everything i'll explain later next i'll go to the topic physical quantities physical quantities are quantities that can be measured that is the quantities 
that we are able to measure are called physical quantities. Physical quantities are of two types. Fundamental quantities and derived quantities. You know, fundamental quantities are quantities which cannot be obtained from any other quantities. That is, it can be basic quantity or called as unique quantity, unit quantity, whichever you can. That is, you cannot obtain this fundamental quantity from any other quantities. Whereas, what are derived quantities? Derived quantities are nothing but the quantities that are obtained from fundamental quantities are derived quantities. I'll explain it with the example so you'll understand it better. See, some of the fundamental quantities are length, mass, time. Derived quantities are area, volume and speed. See, length. Length is a unique quantity. It cannot be obtained from any other quantities. Get my point? Whereas derived quantity, area, we'll take area. Area is not, area of a rectangle is nothing but length into breadth. Length into breadth is the area of the rectangle. When we want the length to be calculated, we depend on the fundamental quantity, this one. So, they are called as derived quantities. Let us take an example. Say, length is equal to 2 cm. So, when you want the area to be calculated, you use this length value to calculate the area. Hence, they are called as derived quantities. Hence, length is called the fundamental quantities. So, these are some of the fundamental quantities and these are some of the derived quantities. Okay, I think you got the point. Okay, next topic we are going to cover is SI unit. You know what is SI unit? SI unit stands for System International or International System of Units. Okay, I don't want to complicate things so I'll tell you in a better way. See, uh, like every country will follow some certain system of units for calculation. But for simplicity and for some uniformity, like to uh, make others understand, every country has accepted seven basic units which is used internationally they are called SI units that is international system of units the seven SI units are length which is measured in meter mass kilogram time seconds electric current ampere temperature in kelvin luminous intensity in candela amount of substance in mole okay uh, so, uh, these are the SI units. But beyond SI units, we need other units for calculation. Okay. Uh, for example, I want to find the distance between two cities like Coimbatore, Chennai. So, when I have to find the distance, I cannot express it in meter because it takes a huge value. And hence, I will express it in Kilometer, which is a multiple of the basic unit meter. Okay. Why I say this is, next topic we are going to cover is multiple and submultiple. Okay. You know what is multiple and submultiple? This can be explained through the metric table. See. If you want a piece of cloth, that we can express it in meter. Piece of cloth in meter. Whereas distance between two cities is kilometer. Whereas I want to find the tip of this pin. See, this tip is this much, which cannot be expressed it in me, which can be expressed, but it uh, takes so many division and all. So we will express it in millimeter. So this is the basic unit below which is all the multiple. And above it is all the submultiple. Get my point? When I want to express the distance between two cities, I will use the multiple of the basic unit, which is the kilometer. When I want to find the tip of the pen, I can exp I want to express it in millimeter, which is a submultiple of meter. Okay. So the examples are multiples and submultiples. See, multiple example is distance between two cities, kilometer. Submultiple is length of tip of pencil, millimeter. Okay? Okay. Next topic we are going to cover is error. 
you know we live in a world where we need accuracy more than approximation today everywhere accuracy is required see when you go uh, for example i'll tell you when you go to a jewelry if we have an approximate value like 9 grams will be accepted no because the value of 1 gram is that much uh, nearly around 4500 or something like that so accuracy is very important how accuracy is obtained by removing the error you know what is error error is nothing but the difference or deviation or displacement from the actual value it is the it is called error okay one of the common error that we are going to see is the parallax error okay before seeing the definition i'll explain you what is parallax error see here uh, i keep the tip of the pen like this okay okay here i want to find the length of the tip of the pen let us consider a person standing in position a b and c so i'll tell you what for uh, to find the value of the tip of the pencil from the position b say let us say consider it as 5 for a person standing in a and c it may be 4 or 6 that is because of the change in view or position on the object from where he stands see b stands just above vertically above this object and hence he reads the value as 5 whereas the uh, position a and c may read a different value this causes an error called parallax error so to avoid parallax error what we should do whenever we want to find the value of an object uh, which is in a straight uh, way just stand vertically above the object and note the reading hence we can avoid this parallax error so parallax error uh, definition can be given like displacement or difference in apparent position of an object viewed from different lines of sight got my point I don't want to complicate this just think the difference in value that is caused by the change in position hence your view also changes which will result in change in value okay okay next topic we are going to cover is methods of measuring length of a curved line okay now what does this topic say? We are going to measure the length of a curved line. Okay. I'll explain you. See, we are using two methods to find the length of a curved line. Let us consider A, B, B the curved line. So, the first method we are going to use is a string. Using string. How do we find the length of a curved line using a string? Just let us consider this as the string place the string just above the curved line exactly just above the curved line so this way exactly above the curved line you place uh, since i am taking the video i am not able to pray, take it properly see let us consider this now using a pen note the point where the line ends see this is the point now take a ruler that is the scale and place this thread over the scale you can find the length of the curved line how much this length is this is the method used to find the length of the curved line using string next method i am going to tell is the divider method since i don't have a divider i'll use this pin for now I'll consider this as the divider. The divider has two legs. Okay. Now, the same straight line, what you're going to do, I mean curved line, what you're going to do is take the divider. Let us consider this the divider. Keep it in a distance of one centimeter using a scale. 
that is the distance between these two legs should be 1 cm. Now what I am going to do is place this on the curved line mark the first 1 cm. Similarly from second point to the next 1 cm, third 1 cm, fourth 1 cm. If there is any balance that cannot be marked just take a scale and uh, measure that length and finally you will get the length of the curved line using divider. These are the two methods which are very simple. Okay. So aim. Please don't memorize. Please understand. What is aim? Aim is to find the measure of the to measure the length of the curved line using string. First one. Using divider is the second one. What are the materials required? You require a thread or a string then what you want a pen then uh, a ruler these are all the materials required similarly for divider you will write it as divider then procedure draw a line a b uh, draw a curved line a b then uh, place a string uh, exactly over the line uh, then mark with the uh, mark the end of the line using the uh, sketch pen or whatever it is then measure it, uh, place it over the ruler and measure the length of the string, a uh, length of the curved line. Oh, this is the way you must write. Please don't memorize. Okay. I think you got these points. Next, I am going to cover an important concept which is area and volume. Okay. What is area and what is volume? I'll tell you, I clearly explain you what is area and volume. When you talk about a 2D object, let us say a rectangle. Rectangle, the space inside this rectangle is the area. Whereas, Okay. Mm. See, this is a cube. This is a 3D figure, and the space or the uh, the space occupied inside this closed figure is the volume. I'll explain it very clearly. Okay. 